In the last vignette, we had been speaking about divine revelation. And we mentioned the fact that other names for divine revelation is sacred doctrine. And St. Thomas called it sacred doctrine because it is so sacred that we are not supposed to touch it, to alter it, to modify it. Sometimes divine revelation is also referred to as the commandments of Christ. Or the shortest description of divine revelation is divine love. For it is the love by which God had loved us and exactly the same love by which God wants us to love him. And so it is so important for us to discover divine revelation, discover likewise to whom it was entrusted, because the moment we know who was entrusted by divine revelation, we have to believe it simply by the authority of her keeper. Since we believe that divine revelation was given to the Catholic Church, then from henceforward, we believe the sacred doctrines simply by the authority of the Church. And so it becomes very important for us to find out too, which is the true Church of Christ. Because from henceforward, we are not going to use our reason nor our feeling in order to make judgments on things pertaining to God. We are going to believe just by the authority of the Church. We have seen the goodness of God and how God loves us. For after all, love is expressed in acts of goodness. And we have seen the fact that God prepared the human race for the receiving of divine revelation. In the last vignette, we have seen how he prepared the pagans by seeing to it that all pagan religions would have some element of truth. And it is this element of truth that attracted people to such religions. But in a very special way, God prepared the Jewish people. And God would demand from the church today exactly what he demanded from the Jewish people. For one thing, there were many tribes, but God chose only one. And so today, there are many Christian religions, and God would only choose one. Imagine if God chose ten religions during the time of the Jews. Imagine if God chose ten different Christian sects today to be spokesmen of his sacred doctrine. Why, there would be total chaos. It is in accordance, therefore, to the divine wisdom of God that in the Old Testament he chose only one, and there was no confusion whatsoever when he chose the Jewish people. And so the same thing today, it would be in accordance to the wisdom of God that he chooses only one in order to avoid confusion. Man by himself is confused enough, and so God had to do so many things knowing that man is confused. And so God gave us some knowledge and a few revelations to the Jewish people in order to cure this confusion. What made God love the Jewish people, as we have seen last vignette, is their passion to retain tradition. They really stuck to tradition, the one given to them by Moses, 
And really, they did everything to preserve this tradition to the point of being like monks. In other words, it was like a eremitical tribe trying to go away from all contacts with pagan tribes for one purpose, to preserve their tradition. And so with the Catholic Church, it seems that among all the Christian sects, there is only one, the most two, who are very much devoted to tradition. For one thing, I know the Anglican Church is quite devoted and faithful to tradition. The Catholic Church, as a church, is supposed to be faithful to tradition, since we believe and we teach that the forms of revelation come from scripture and tradition. But it seems that the fact of the matter is very few Catholics, very, very few, know anything about tradition. And so God revealed a little of what you call sacred doctrine to the Jewish people to the point that if you notice their teachings are very close to Christianity. In fact, Christianity is just the perfection of the Jewish religion. And when God gave them laws to preserve the little revelation he had given them, those laws were observed faithfully by the Jewish nation. For instance, God appeared to them as a spiritual God. And that's the reason why they were forbidden to make images or statues of God, which Aaron did. But the point is, the reason why God did not want them to make statues or images is to emphasize the fact that he was a spiritual God. Now, during that time, it was quite difficult for the people of the Old Testament to make a distinction between a physical God and a spiritual God. But it is quite possible today, it is even easy today to make such a distinction. A child can make such a distinction. And so it is no longer forbidden today to make images or statues of God, adding to the fact that God, after all, became a man, and so an image of him could be made. And it was also very important to the Jewish people to show the oneness of their religion that worship should only be done in one place, in the temple of Jerusalem. Because if there were so many temples, the oneness of the Jewish nation would not be very evident. And so worship should only be in one temple. But over and above this, it was only with the Jewish people that God made a covenant. A covenant by which God demanded fidelity from the Jewish people, but on his part, God promised to always take care of them. Of course, there were a few rules here and there which God gave the Jewish people whose connection to divine revelation is a little bit blurred. Like, for instance, the demand for tassels in the clothing of the priests, or the prohibition to eat seagulls. Seagulls? Well, these are little rules which were given to the Jewish people, and even though the Jewish people did not realize the connection with their worship of God, they obeyed those rules. Now that is quite important. But aside from these seemingly small rules, notice the important way of life that the Jewish people observed, which was almost Christian. Examples 
of the way of life that the Jewish people must observe, which is so similar to Christianity, so similar that we may even say that Christians cannot observe them, though they were rules of the Old Testament, for instance, not to be fond of money, not to run after money, not to desire so great money, to be kind to the poor, to be honest in all your dealings with everyone, and the avoidance of gross sensual pleasures. Now notice how Christian those laws sound and the Jewish people were observing them faithfully. In spite of all these revelations given to the Jewish people, wherein God was preparing them for a spiritual Messiah who would lead them spiritually, the Jewish people made a mistake. They were waiting for a human, royal, political Messiah. And so here we have seen God preparing the human race using pagan religion, preparing the human race during the Jewish people, and God even used the whole world. He prepared the world in the sense that at that time, the Greek culture was predominant in the entire known world. And Roman discipline was controlling the whole known world. Everything was peaceful during that time. Even the mind of the people, like the nest we had mentioned last vignette, is prepared for the laying of the egg. Divine revelation is about to take place. But wait, just one more preparation. A young girl, a Jewish girl, in the midst of a Jewish nation where all women would like to marry, had vowed virginity. God sends her a little revelation, this young girl who was a masterpiece of God. And she says, Fiat, the language of saints, your will be done, and revelation became man. God bless you.